Hey guys, this is Onisha Biggs with another pharmacy tech lesson. And today we're going to be talking about concentrations. So, let's talk about what a concentration is. So basically, a concentration is the amount of active drug that's in a certain dilutant. Okay, so let's say, or in a specified volume. Okay, let's don't, we're not going to work on any advanced words for right now. But let's say, um, well, let's talk about the two ways that a concentration can be described. Okay, so there are one. One way would be weight to volume. The second way, so an example of weight to volume would be uh, grams over milliliters. Okay? So the second way that a concentration can be expressed would be volume to volume. So an example of volume to volume would be milliliters to milliliters. Alright, so as an example, where's my eraser? As an example of a concentration Let's say we have, of course, uh, my favorite. Let's say we have azithromycin, okay? Let's say we have 200 milligrams over 5 ml in a... 15 ml bottle. So basically, the active amount would be this. This is the active amount of azithromycin. Uh oh. Of azithromycin that's in this 15 ml bottle. Okay. So my next question to you would be this. And let me erase this. How many milliliters do we need for a 100 milligram dose? So how many mLs do we need for 100 milligram dose if this is the active amount? Okay? So how we would set this up would be, remember how we looked at it with variables, okay? Or not with variables, I'm sorry. Uh, the variable would actually go here. This would be the variable, which is the missing link. But remember how we looked at it when we were talking about proportions and ratios. So this is what we have. which is this, and this is what we want. So we're trying to go from one point to another, okay? So how we would do it is we set it up like this. Uh, man, it's kind of big, but I don't want to erase it. Okay, we set it up like this. We do half on one side, so we have our half right here, which is 200 milligrams to 5 milliliters and we're going to say equals what we want which is 100 milligrams because remember remember our it has to be unit to unit when we're talking about uh, proportions a certain proportion or ratio of something so the units have to match so we got our milligrams on top and we don't know how many mls on the bottom so this is our, what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out this number. So also, remember in our previous video, we talked about 
the rule for proportion. So our units are the same and we know three of the four var variables. So we, or we know three of the four values. I'm sorry, this is the variable. I want to make that clear. So basically now all we have to do is solve it. So how do we solve it? Well, we cross multiply. So let's see here. We got, oh, and I want to use a different color marker. But we have, let's see, 5 times 100, that is 500 equals 200 times x, 200x. And you can do either one for first. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. And let's see, 200x. Isolate the variable, which will leave us with, uh, what do I write this? X equals over 200. And that would be 2.5. And of course, we know our unit is mLs. So basically, when it's asking us how many mLs would be needed, if this is what we have, how many mLs of azithromycin would be needed for a 100 milligram dose? We're going to need 2.5 eraser. 2.5. This is our answer. Okay? So we followed all the right steps. We made sure that our units were the same. We looked at what we have versus what we wanted. And then we set that problem up to where our ratio showed that the units are equivalent, milligrams to milligram, uh, ml to ml. And we cross multiplied and we solved for our missing variable, which is x here, which is what we're looking for here. And it gave us 2.5. So that's how you work that. Okay, so we're going to look at another way that we can look at concentrations. So another way to look at concentrations is like this. You may have, uh, let's see, it may read like this, one, two, five thousand. And that's still a concentration. It's still a ratio, a proportion of something, and it's showing you a concentration. So, the problem may be like this. And I'll put, the, uh, I'll put the problem down below also um, in the details section, okay? So you can check out if you want to work the problems along with me or try to work them by yourself first and then try to work them along with the video, see if you got it right, then you can do that. So a problem may be something like this. How many grams of active drug would be contained in 250 ml of a 1 to 400 solution. Alright, so let's look at the key things here. First of all, it's talking about, okay, we, need, we know we need to find grams. So this is our variable, okay? That's what we're missing. Okay, let's see, will be contained in, a 200, in 250 ml. So we know that the concentration of the missing variable would be, or the, the volume for this missing variable here would be 250 mLs. And then we're looking here to see what our total solution is, what we have already, and this is what we have. Okay? So these two variables here, these two, are showing what we want. Okay? 
So that's how you would break that word problem down. All right, so now let's set it up. So we have, we're going to put our have on this side and our want over here. So we have uh, one and the, and the units have to be the same, okay? So we have one gram over 250 ml, so that's our half. I'm sorry, not 250. It's over 400 ml, sorry. And what we want is X amount of grams, so we don't know over 250 ml. Okay, so basically from here, what do we know to do? We cross multiply and we find the missing variable and that will give us the answer to this problem. So we have 400X, which is equal to 250 divide 400, 400, and here we're going to get x is equal to, get my notes out, 0 0.625 grams. If you have your calculator, you can work that out. Um, also note, they're going to provide you with a calculator uh, when you're taking the PTCB exam, okay? So you won't be able to bring your own personal calculator. Um, you can work with your own personal calculator while you're at home. But when you get to the test, um, they're going to give you this very basic calculator. I mean, it's going to have the main four functions, uh, division, multiplication, adding, and subtracting, and of course, the numbers that you use in decimal points. So just make sure when you're working it out on a calculator, you're not using any fancy formulas that might be programmed into your calculator because you won't be able to have that on the PTCB exam, right? Okay, perfect. So it looks like we did everything that we were supposed to do when it comes to working out this concentration. So it asks us how many grams we needed out of this. We looked at what we have, what we had already out of this concentration. This is what we have, one gram over 400 have versus what we want. Uh, we didn't know how many grams, but we did know how many milliliters. So we had three variables, one, two, three, and we were looking for, I'm sorry, we had three values, one, two, three, and we were looking for the fourth variable, which we did not know. I'm trying to drill it in that variables we don't know. Variables would be like the X or the L or any other letter that we would use in place of the number that we're trying to find, okay? I don't want to confuse you between what a value is and a variable, okay? The value is what we already have. A variable would be some type of number that we're looking for, okay? So we cross multiplied, we isolated our variable, and we got x equals 0 0.625 grams for our answer here. Okay, so that's how you work concentrations. Uh, really, it was a mix of concentration plus what we already know about variables, what we learned in the previous videos, and plus what we know about ratios and proportions and just bringing that all together to figure out grams or milliliters, uh, what we need for a particular dose, okay? If you want some more examples, like I said, just leave your questions below in the comments. Um, and also stay tuned because we have a lot more material coming your way. Uh, in the future so make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you get those updates uh, and in the near future you'll be able to head over to the website and uh, actually get on the email list so that you can see other videos that aren't here but are elsewhere so you guys have a great day take care and uh, like I said stay tuned strong studying make sure that you're being diligent about your studies and staying on top of everything you need so you all have a great day take care bye bye